Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Would you mind telling it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by his teacher in his words. This was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum, the Wet Tails. Akalis was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy. And his teeth strong. Akalis was admired by everyone in his clan, and because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of Akalis City asked him to perform a very important and very special duty: to bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an Alation town across the sea. This particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns, and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Akalis grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely, and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry because Akalis was young. And too sure of himself, but she wanted to test him, and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs. That a warrior must also be wise and careful. So Akalis set out across the sea on his flight. It was on the fourth day that he spotted something in the water that caught his attention. And forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, Akalis dived towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he saw that there were merum in the water, foolishly hunting close to the surface. And Akalis saw an opportunity to again prove his might, as a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time, Akalis' arrogance got the better of him, because the Merum had set a trap. As he dived towards the Merum with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. Akalis struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. Akalis was bleeding. And the merum were grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside, because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Akalis could not return to his village because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people. And so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Akalis now became the lost one. He who had been on a sacred mission, but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed, and one day Akalis met with human traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Akalis heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Octowo. The Octowo was said to have a third eye, like a jewel, and that this eye pulled hapless sailors into its deadly eight-armed grasp. Akalis knew immediately that the Octowo's third eye had to be the jewel that he lost in the sea a year ago. And he now saw the opportunity to redeem himself, but the Lation were not used to water, and the thought of submerging himself in the cold, harsh ocean chilled Akalis to his heart. But he was the lost one, and if in his death he could at the very least redeem himself, 
to his own heart, then it would be worth it. So Achilles fashioned himself a spear, because in the water his claws and his beak would be too slow, and he flew out to where the octavo was last seen. And then Achilles dived into the sea. The dark water closed in on him, and his wings and legs went numb. But still Achilles kept pushing down until he saw the lair of the octavo. Spotting Achilles, the octavo attacked, and Achilles saw the monster's third eye, his sacred jewel, shining bright in the darkness. And his heart was filled with a sense of duty and courage that he had never felt before. But as he began fighting the eight-armed monster, Achilles realized that if he were to fight like he usually did, he would not stand a chance. He would have to think differently. And so Achilles tricked the octavo into following him through a tight chasm, where the monster got stuck. And then he swam above it, and using his spear, tipped a rock on top of the octavo. Swimming back down again, the octavo was flailing helplessly. Now, almost out of air, Achilles took the sacred jewel from the octavo's head and swam back up. Finally, Achilles could deliver the sacred jewel to the town across the sea, and upon returning to his village, he went to the teller, bowed his head, and said, "Forgive me, teller." For in my arrogance, I thought I could do everything, but I could not, and I became the lost one because of it. You were lost," said the teller, "but you are no more, because now you see the limits of your own strength, and you will know that a warrior must be careful and wise, in addition to being strong and fierce. This was the tale of C. And I told it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher.